Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast. I'm Ryan Chacon, and on today's episode, you're going to learn about what Industry 4.0 is and means, as well as the power of IoT remote management. And I have two members of the Teltonica Networks team, Thomas Michaelitis, as well as Pranis Oxymatalkis. Those of you unfamiliar with Teltonica, they are a technology company focused on manufacturing professional network connectivity equipment for international markets. Fantastic guests today. I think we'll get a lot of value out of hearing from both of them. Please feel free to subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon so you get the latest episodes as soon as they are out, as well as give us video a thumbs up. Before we jump into it, a quick word from our sponsor. Silicon Labs, a leader in secure, intelligent wireless technology, has launched their 2023 Tech Talk schedule. This year's Tech Talks include dedicated technology series for Matter, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and LPWAN in order to help you build the development skills needed to deliver cutting-edge IoT products. Join Silicon Labs experts and industry leaders for these one-hour live virtual trainings created for developers by developers. Accelerate your device development today by registering at silabs.com. That's the letter S, the letter I, L-A-B-S.com. Thomas and Pranis, welcome, welcome both to the uh, IoT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Uh, great uh, to be here. Thank you for inviting us to join in your podcast. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to have you both here. Um, let me kick this off by having you both give a quick introduction about yourself and a quick overview of the company, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, so I'm Thomas Michaelitis. Uh, I'm a product owner of uh, Teltonica Networks Remote Management System. And my main goal, of course, is you know, to talk with our customers, look for best ways how to improve our system, and, of course, you know, be the, the guy who provides information for customers, but also takes back feedback and improves it over time. Since again, gotcha. we are working in that place. Perfect. So I'm Pranas Aksanatauskas. I'm operational marketing project executive at Teltonica Networks and mainly my daily task uh, to take care of marketing projects. And we both represent the company Teltonica Networks that how I like to say we are a company that manufactures tiny boxes that gives <laughs> connectivity to everyone. But if talking seriously, we are industrial network connectivity equipment manufacturer from Lithuania. Okay. And basically our portfolio consists of industrial modems, gateways, routers, switches. Gotcha. Fantastic. Appreciate those overviews. Um, so I wanted to jump into our conversation today, kind of centered around industry 4.0, um, remote management, all that kind of good stuff. But let's start high level. And if one of you wouldn't mind just kind of giving a quick overview to our audience is when they hear the term industry 4.0 or industrial IoT, what does that exactly mean? And how does that kind of compare to just IoT in general? Actually, uh, if we start talking about uh, Industry 4.0, we can uh, go back to the roots of that. And from the beginning of industry, all the time on every every level uh, of industry evolution, uh, the main purpose, main goal was to have a better efficiency and greater productivity. And at first, uh, how to say, industrial world harnessed the, the steam power to make advantage of, of it. And after that, it was introduction of production lines and later computerization. And we, when we are going to talk about industry 4.0, it could be called like uh, optimization of computerization. Because okay. in this, we are not only keen on, uh, how to say, uh, how, how to say that only rely on computerization of production lines, but on sure. interconnectivity of, of it. So in, in this case, uh, IoT is the one of key component of okay. in industrial equipment. And it's not only, how to say, control the only one production line of production equipment, but very important to say that they has ability to communicate together with other equipment and also communicate with a controlling platform that is far, far away from, from that factory sure. or so. 
fantastic. And when we're talking about kind of industry 4.0, industrial IoT space, and how it connects to, as you mentioned, IoT being a component of that, what technologies are really leading the way in um, industrial IoT? Actually, everything started to be, how to say, uh, more affordable when networking technologies and protocols developed and okay. how to say, started to be uh, easy, adaptable, and easy to use in industrial environment. And in this case, that if we talk and compare IoT itself, li like the main, uh, how to say, bubble or, or so, and industrial IoT is like a smaller part of it. And okay. I say, because IoT, it's very wide term. We can uh, call smartwatch or smartphone connected to the smart TV and streaming YouTube to in, at our house. It's like IoT, but mm. it's a bit different when it comes to industrial environment. And industrial IoT I say, has a different requirements, different complexity. Okay. And it's, it's not only, how to say, dedicated to a person's uh, convenience, but yeah. has a huge focus on return on investment also. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, I would love it if, uh, now that we've kind of given a quick overview of, of Industry 4.0, IIoT, the technologies. What about, I guess, to bring a full circle for our audience, can you talk about some of the use cases that are kind of leading the industrial IoT space? Uh, just kind of talking through kind of what the main focus of those use cases are and, and kind of what they're accomplishing. Actually, at first, we can think that only that use cases related with manufacturing are important and, and useful in IoT sector. But... Actually, it's it's wider picture because IoT, industrial IoT can be used whenever is the on time demand is is needed because okay. with variety of different sensors, different equipment, you can see what's going wrong right, what's going on wrong, and at which point, and you can re react immediately or even uh, give this decision making to. I say artificial intelligence or so. So even uh, human decision making is is not needed at some times. And from smart manufacturing, the use cases could be uh, also the smart agriculture, uh, smart building management or so. And I have a uh, exact one. Uh, quite um, interesting use case from, from my experience, from our clients, when in farming industry, there was used uh, cameras and various sensors connected mm. to AI system and where the well-being of the animals were watched and analyzed and through the motions, through the, let's say, that behavior of the, the animals, what made decisions, maybe there's something wrong with them or not, and to keep an eye, right. because in that places where a lot of different items or in this example, animals, persons cannot look after everything and IT system can do that. Right, right. Yeah, it sounds like kind of the remote management element of what IoT technologies enable is super important in, in especially the industrial space. Um, can you talk to kind of that point a little bit more and, and why remote management is so powerful and important, especially in industrial as opposed to, I know it's important in other industries, obviously, as well, but just kind of, it, it seems to provide a lot of extra value in the industrial space. Companies being able to do more with less, they're able to handle things remotely, um, become more efficient as an organization. But just if we're talking about remote management in general, as it relates to the industrial space, why is it so powerful and important? Uh, I think we have, to, in this case, we have to look uh, why remote management is required in the first place. And sure. if we're looking at very narrow perspective, it can be, in my opinion, three cases, you know, monitoring, accessing, or controlling. And if you look at a classic way how in a 
past before you know all IoT structural uh, and use cases were done. The remote management uh, existed like a you know, simple thing of calling to a person to get into mm. uh, in a place to check what's happening. Uh, but now we are talking not about you know huge substations where you know you can have local team. We are talking about small things uh, or thousands of locations with hundreds of sensors, cameras, computers, etc. And naturally, you know, if you want to have a profitable business, you have to think how to make things efficient in this place. And the only way to think forward is to go with remote management since the power it comes here that when computers and machines are way better to uh, track what's happening, perform parallel, uh, perform parallel uh, actions for firmware updates, for reconfiguration, uh, right. as Pran has mentioned with the use cases of animals, uh, the same thing, you know, you can be alerted on small things for a for, for person, it still can look, it's everything okay. So reaction time can be re re reduced. And again, predictive maintenance with remote management is now enabled since mm. the personnel can easily, you know, start investigating uh, what's happening remotely and right. Right. react and fix, maybe change configuration and, you know, keep things still running or, you know, can dispatch the team with the right tools, right parts and right. start analyzing what's happening there and fix ASAP. Yeah. No, absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned um, the predictive maintenance side of things because that's a really hot topic and big leading use case in the industrial space where the ability to monitor machines, you know, processes remotely and understand where things are potentially going to go wrong or where there are potential issues that could arise uh, and being able to handle that's pretty pretty big are there any other kind of um as it relates directly to the remote management and even predictive maintenance to a, to a disagree are you all seeing kind of anything um from a, a use case standpoint that's kind of surprising you or standing out on that front uh as of late currently no uh, as a Daltonico, we have run in various use cases so again yeah every time we see how our partners using our perform uh, our devices and our systems uh, we're always interested to know how that imagination comes but in my perspective i have made three really um, three use cases which really stood in my mind so one is that okay. the coffee machines with that those predictive maintenance uh i talked around the one company from switzerland I have, if i remember correctly what they're doing they still have all those um, on demand teams which traveling on site to manage, maintain the coffee machines. But the yep. difference they mentioned uh, when they integrated IoT with remote management is that now they are traveling on site with purpose and what they and they know what they're gonna do. Maybe they just okay. have to fill the coffee. Others right. are bringing the spare parts, the machine parts to ensure that you're providing best service and you're ensuring that people are getting coffee <laughs> in that case. Yeah. Uh, but there's also other use cases we have. For example, we have really interesting use case with slot machines where a customer uh, has, a, since again, we're talking here about money and those companies are really strict about security where they have really interesting use case that every month they, they have to change the password for their routers. And now to my knowledge, they have around 10,000 devices running. And imagine that the person has to change the password for all of those 10,000 devices. It can be quite tedious and it's not scalable. With IoT and remote management, this becomes from 100 person job, one person job. And instead of yeah. months, we're talking about hours. And this is the strength where IoT coming. And with that is also coming onboarding and of course, management, security updates, etc. where very interesting use case. And the last one, the third one, which struck in my mind is that the company is maintaining vending machines and the credit card readers require software update. It's mandatory for them. And it's very was interesting to hear from that, that when after moving from 
standard approach uh, where a person is traveling on site to perform upgrade and moving to remote management through the system, single update paid for the whole system, the remote management, the integrated device, etc. So we can see how efficiency uh, in matter it like tenfold increases in company. And this is quite significant you know, to hear from the customers where simple thing like having a secure access to the end device changes uh, the whole business approach. Fantastic. Yeah, that, those are great kind of examples of, of what's been going on in the space from a use case standpoint. Um, I'm still amazed at all the different kind of use cases that pop up in the different industries and what IoT is enabling. So I appreciate you kind of running us through those. Well, I wanted to quickly kind of transition away from kind of the overview and the, and the use case side of things and talk about some of the challenges you all are seeing in the industry right now, uh, especially in industry 4.0, industrial IoT kind of use cases. What, what When it comes to the implementation of IoT solutions, the adoption of IoT solutions in these industries, what are you seeing as the biggest challenges in the space right now with the companies that you're talking to, working with and so forth? Um, I think, yeah, you know, we can talk about the most uh, common mentioned word security. Okay. Uh, since at this point, you know, every company can have from 10 devices and I mentioned and up to 10,000 devices. So uh, you can see, you, I think we all read the possibilities that, you know, your fridge can be one of the bots in the botnet. Uh, so right. as a service provider, we are we having this, uh, Mm, having this uh, play a role where we have to ensure all our partners network security, device security, and look, you know, that single breach can, you know, uh, unleash the power of million devices, you know, into the whole network. So, you know, the security is really a huge part. And as we all know, the most security breaches are coming not, for example, from a buggy software, the most security breaches are coming from the uh, the weakest link, which is in most sure. cases are the person, you know, using uh, five simple password, like password or 777. Uh, and from the developer of such remote management platform in IoT business, business, we have to force users to use strong passwords. So at least, you know, eight symbols, capital letters, right, more right. letters, numbers, right, special right. symbols. Uh, two-factor verification now it's a mandatory thing you know we, we not, okay. even cannot rely with the hardware getting so powerful we cannot even rely on those strong passwords we have to give additional factors in this place and you know communication between devices and server web accessibility etc all those parts are in the role of our hands and we have to look at security at this point and we have to yep. prove that security in some way so this is quite a challenge uh, comes for, for us but of course there's other challenge we see in, in in iot business and of course it comes from you know uh from elder generation where they see that stereotype that only proper maintenance can be done by person who is in place yeah in, by fa yeah. Uh, directly interacting with right and that is i think that way bigger challenge to overcome since only with good examples with good use cases you are showing that it's possible to do things with iot remotely and hmm. since you know sometimes it's uh, the problem is just not uh, even the hardware wise it's software wise you have to change update sure. or just change config re wrong configuration you know uh, i think we saw quite a, many use cases where uh single true or false statement changes or whole things so i think this is the two big challenges for us we have to look at yeah the the last point you mentioned i'm glad you brought it up because it it's interesting when i've talked to a lot of um guests on this podcast that are in different industries anytime industrial gets brought up there always seems to be a lack of flexibility that they're battling with with the companies they're talking to whether that's buy-in from upper management whether that's getting the approval to be able to even do a pilot for a lot of these implementations mainly because they're in the boat to come to what you said like it in their mind it only can be done one way and bringing in new tech to their existing systems 
and existing processes only in their mind is a, is a disruption to the way of, of what they know. So it takes a lot to kind of convince them. And uh, I think what we're seeing universally around the industry a lot is the need for more success stories, case studies, kind of examples of IoT actually being successful um, from a deployment standpoint in as many industries and solving as many use cases as possible, because that allows those individuals who are maybe kind of stuck on the fence of, of when it comes to adoption, giving them more uh, insights into what IoT can actually do for their business. Um, and it's not just taking people at their word, it's actually seeing competitors, seeing other industry players succeed implementing IoT um, will it then kind of help encourage them to kind of get over that hill of adoption for sure. Yeah, yeah, I agree totally, you know, and of course, you know, the same is true also on other side, if, you know, if IoT fails, you know, we'll, we're getting not one step back, we're getting two steps oh, back. Sure. So we always yeah. uh, must care, you know, and ensure that uh, we always think what we are doing. And of course. Oh, totally. Very good point. Absolutely. So, um, so last thing I want to ask you both before we, before we get off here is, um, so as we are now in 2023, what does the future kind of look like in your mind for the uh, in industry 4.0 industrial IOT kind of space? Uh, what are you most excited about? What are you looking forward to kind of what do you think is going to happen? Actually, uh, the future we think is, we, the future will be very interesting actually, because, uh, for we do not uh, completely understand how connected we are at the moment. And if we look, I don't know, 10 or 15 years back, uh, the, the present day could look like a science fiction movie or, or, or so, because our daily lives are connected to our house appliances. For example, you can get a notification from your fridge that the milk is, is low or so. But what I'm happy about that Industrial IoT is getting more and more affordable, and it's not just for big enterprises, big manufacturing companies, mm. but they are accessible and affordable for small companies. And for these companies, uh, industrial IoT lets to increase productivity, efficiency, and also the profits, what is the main goal of the business, and allows not to increase the cost. At the, the I'll say the same scale or so, so sure. the demand for industrial IoT will be growing definitely in coming years, uh, and and the reasons why this happening is that more and more industrial IoT and in general IoT are used in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Thomas, anything on your end that you're seeing kind of from your perspective that you kind of are looking forward to or excited to see kind of going forward? Uh, from my perspective, you know, I think, you know, from remote management, uh, looking in our, you know, where we are going as Altonica, uh, more and more, you know, see an ability to control remotely, you know, and less time spending on the road and most uh, yep. time spending, um, taking decisions and having, you know, business running and not, you know, wasting resources in the place where you where, for 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 use for act uh, for work which does not give any added value so you know as mentioned right. Right. sitting in a car and driving around <laughs> in fact no i totally got it yeah perfect um so thank you both for taking the time uh, what i wanted to ask you just before i let you go here is for our audience out there who wants to learn more about the company, kind of what you have going on, follow up from this discussion in any way, what's the best way they can do that? I believe the the best way is to visit our website, deltonica-networks.com. And also it would be nice to have all the viewers of this podcast to follow us on social media, on LinkedIn and Facebook. Okay. Perfect. Well, we'll make sure we include all those links, website, and so forth in the description and all the material that goes out. But otherwise, both of you, thank you so much for taking the time. Fantastic conversation. I really appreciate you taking the time to kind of talk to our audience a bit. Thank, thank you, you for inviting us as well. Yeah, we are happy to have this opportunity.